Today we're gonna look at an ultra-wide angle lens made by Sigma. A lens like this one allows us to create an exaggerated perspective between the subject and the background. It is good in tight spaces and it opens up new creative possibilities. The star of this video is the Sigma 10-20mm f3.5 EX DC HSM. We're gonna learn 15 things about it. Let's start with the first one. What's on the lens? We have the big rounded front element, which is common for ultra-wide angle lenses. The focusing ring. It's a bit hard to turn, but it allows smooth and precise focusing. Here is the distance indicator. This is always useful. The zoom ring. It turns very smoothly. It runs in the opposite direction than the Canon lenses, and it's easier to twist than the focusing ring. We have the lens mount made from metal, but without the weather sealing gasket. The AF2 manual focusing switch and printed, we see the filter thread size of 82 millimeters. This one on the left side is our Sigma lens. It's clearly smaller than the 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8. So our lens has a good size for easy handling. On the right side, I put an ultra wide angle lens from a different brand just to give you an idea of the similarities. Let's now see the weight. It has 570 grams. At 10 millimeters, we have an ultra wide angle lens that allows us to get a lot of things inside the frame. When we need to exclude something, we can zoom in all the way to 20 millimeters. These focal lengths are very enjoyable and allow us to get an exaggerated perspective between the subject and the background. They really open up new creative possibilities. Being a lens for crop sensor cameras, our 10 to 20 mm Sigma has the full frame equivalent of 16 to 32 mm. I had a lot of fun using this lens for the photos that you now see on the screen. The ultra wide angle lens experience is something that I recommend. So can we use it on full frame cameras also? The surprising answer is yes, but with limitations. I attached it on my Canon 5D Mark III. As we can see, at 10 millimeters, the corners have some heavy vignetting. But if we zoom in a bit above 14 millimeters, we get full coverage. Even if we can use it on full frame cameras, the lens wasn't designed for them. It was made for APS-C sensor DSLR cameras. Multiple versions were created to work on crop sensor DSLR cameras from these brands. And, of course, with an adapter, we can use it on mirrorless cameras also. The aperture can close at a maximum value of f22, and it has 7 blades. The aperture stays open at a minimum value of f3.5 throughout the zoom range. That wide aperture opening lets in quite a lot of light. And, as we will see at the ending of this clip, it delivers good bokeh. Let's now go ahead and see the focusing. While the camera is recording video, this lens focuses fast and accurate. The only thing less enjoyable are those loud clicking noises that you hear now. So, for video, maybe we should use an external microphone that is not attached to the camera. Or, even better, we can use manual focusing. When the camera doesn't record video, the lens focuses a bit faster. Those nasty clicking noises go away when we use the lens only for photography. The minimum focusing distance, 24 centimeters. That's close. Oftentimes, this will come in handy. Although it doesn't have image stabilization, this will not be a big issue when making photos. Thanks to the ultra-wide angle of this lens, camera shake is less pronounced. While autofocusing, if needed, we can make adjustments using the manual focusing ring. It always remains active because this lens has full-time manual focus override. Another thing to mention is that the lens has Sigma's super multi-layer coating. This, as mentioned by the manufacturer, suppresses ghosting and flaring by preventing inside the lens reflections. Now, before testing the image quality, it's good to mention that this is an old lens. It was released back in 2009, it's currently discontinued. But it definitely feels like 
it has a solid build quality. That's because it belongs to Sigma's EX class of lenses. Well, build quality is one thing and image quality is another. Let's do some testing. Let's see the sharpness. In the middle of the image, at 10mm and f3.5, the lens has good sharpness. We also see a decent amount of contrast. But towards the edges of the frame, we have a big amount of softness. We also see magenta and green chromatic aberrations on those contrasting edges. Not a big improvement at f4, but getting better now at f5.6. Still waiting to see more sharpness. Closing now to f8, and now we're gonna stop at f11. It's a lot better than how we started, but again, it's not too sharp and we still see chromatic aberrations. Now, let me surprise you a bit. The situation changes quite dramatically if we zoom in at 20 millimeters. At f3.5, the middle of the image is again very sharp, decent contrast, but the edges, they improved a lot. Good sharpness at 20 mm f3.5. Getting better and better until we reach the maximum sharpness at f8. The chromatic aberrations didn't completely disappear, but they are definitely less noticeable. At f11, diffraction starts to soften this image a bit, which is normal, and softens it a bit more if we close down to f16 and f22. So, surprisingly, there is a big difference in corner sharpness between 10 and 20 millimeters. Maybe it's a good idea to zoom in a bit while taking photos, and to not always use the widest angle of this lens. Let's see distortion and vignetting. At 10 millimeters, we see barrel distortion, a lot of it. Could have been better, but I've seen worse. Vignetting is looking good. The corners look decent at f3.5. If we close down at f5.6, the dark corners are pushed away. At 20 mm, there is almost no distortion. The corners got a bit darker at f3.5, but again, if we stop down at f5.6, they look good. Moving to bright light performance. There is a small amount of flaring, the image doesn't lose contrast, which is good. But at 10 mm, there is a big red ring that is visible close to the corners of the image. Looking at close-up image quality now. Sharpness is looking decent as we can see now at f3.5. It's not great, but not bad. There are tiny improvements when we close down the aperture until we reach f8. At f11, softness starts to appear due to diffraction. Of course, it's more noticeable once we close the aperture more. Finally, bokeh. For a lens that can zoom in at just 20 mm, the bokeh is quite surprising. At the maximum aperture, bokeh is looking good. The backgrounds are nice and soft. So, looking good on the bokeh aspect. All in all, it's a lens with a good build quality. Fun to use and helpful in a lot of situations. It has its flaws. Poor corner sharpness with chromatic aberrations, barrel distortion at 10 mm, but for a lens that was released in 2009, as we saw, it also has a lot of qualities. If this review was useful, please press that like button and see you next time.